So I, I guess you can start now, right? All the food's gone, and everything's finished. <laughs> okay, guys. So I, I'm very, very excited to come and speak to you today about Vue.js. It's something that, uh, as a IT person, right, I, I don't normally get very excited about new technology. And when Vue came on to the market, right, when I looked at it, it's like, wow. This is going to be big. And that was about one and a half, two years ago. Today, it's everywhere. Vue is overtaking. We are uh, one of the best, uh, most start on GitHub. And the thing about it is it's just so easy. So I think what I would like to do, right, uh, there are lots of meetups where they talk about to the, the more advanced stuff. Uh, I want to be the person in the uh, the community in the uh, community that does just does the beginner stuff because I, I feel very strongly that beginner stuff is very important. So the title of the meetup is called View JS and New Hope, a new hope of what? So we want to talk about beginners, and you want to look at the uh, look at how fantastic View is. Twenty six thousand stars uh, last year in two thousand sixteen. It's probably now more. Uh, and we are competing with another uh, quite popular uh, framework. It, if there's one line to sum up Vue.js, it means it's less is more. And later I'll talk to you guys why less is more. Uh, finally, the part about single page uh, apps, SPA, that's uh, very, very exciting, where we in the web development business can go and start to uh, make an impact in the uh, mobile apps. That's a very exciting stuff. And finally, what exactly is Vue.js? In case you didn't know, it's a JavaScript framework. So, uh, look at the lines. So, uh, a lot of people uh, like to wonder, uh, what exactly do we mean by framework? Especially those people who are not uh, coders in the market. So, we'll start at the beginning of the beginning. All right, 1000 BC ago, uh, it was paper. Then you can't do very much with paper, okay? You write the thing, that's it, send it to the next guy, not, nothing much happening. Uh, in the 1990s, uh, HTML came into the market uh, that allows you to tag stuff, so you can see more interaction happening. In 1995, you had JavaScript. So just having a plain page with a bold text wasn't enough. We want to have some interaction happening and you normally would see that uh, interaction as a alert. 2002 was uh, jQuery, the first JavaScript uh, library uh, of a uh, the first popular uh, library. It's actually still very popular today. And in the 2010, we had the Angulars uh, starting to appear, which is a framework. So as it gets more complicated, the frameworks appear. So what exactly is this? Okay. <clears throat> when you're doing a lot of J JavaScript, right, you can see on the right-hand side, it's starting to get very, very complicated over the place. I've seen this everywhere. And you end up with that piece of mess on the left-hand side where you don't know where all this code is coming from. It's either in the middle, it's in the side, uh, it's over the page, you have variables reference all over the place. That's what ends up. And when uh, the framework was developed, I like to think that a framework is actually a arrangement like a carpentry desk or something like that, right? So what's unique about that is that, first of all, you have a set of tools that are available to everybody. Uh, it may be a hammer, it may be a screwdriver. These are the first things. The second thing is everything's arranged. So that's what a framework is. It's arranged neatly so that it can be uh, applied. And the third part, which is you know where everything is. So frameworks are very useful when you have multiple people, teams of people who work on the same thing. So imagine if I had a carpentry desk with my friend's house, I could go over there and work on that stuff immediately. So that's what the job, uh, framework is all about. It, make, it standardizes stuff, makes things easy. And then the final part is best uh, practices incorporated. Um, when you're coding, right, you may not know what the best practices are. You may not know, like I have a very bad habit of naming my variables uh, with an underscore or with camel case, and then they float between these two things. 
So a little bit of standardization makes it easy to work as a team. So you don't have to learn this stuff. Uh, you don't have to educate the person you're working with. You just have to say, hey, do you work with this framework? Do you work with this set of carpentry stuff? So that's what a framework is. I, I, not many people actually explain this stuff. Uh, those people who are more advanced, just bear with me on that. So what happened in 2017? What, what, why is Vue.js so good that, you know, until I'm so interested in, in, in The first thing is that front end has gone crazy. It's out of control. Every few months, right, a new front end appears, a new technology. Uh, before I even downloaded NPM 2 point something, or I don't know what, I think 4 point something, the new one came out already. So things that keep changing so quickly in, in front end technology. Um, is described as, for Quora, uh, as ADHD. One minute, it's React. One minute, it's uh, Angular. One minute, it's uh, JSX. One minute, it's uh, TypeScript. We don't know what's happening. So there's a bit of ADHD uh, the going on. The third thing that's happening is that it's more complicated than ever. You've got uh, the compilers. You've got your webpacks. You've got all this stuff coming in there. So for me, more of a back-end guy, it's like I've just left this stuff for a while because I just couldn't get around it. Uh, finally, you've got <coughs> a certain uh, framework <laughs> that takes 200 megabytes and just to start your hello world. So you do all this stuff just to get it started. So this, this is the current landscape we are in. So why Vue.js? Okay, as uh, in a landmark speech, Vue.js started by one guy, Evan Yu. And Evan described this, right, in, a, in his first speech in 2015 as front-end technologies of using a bazooka to kill an ant. So you set up all this stuff to do a very, very small task. And that is what currently we have uh, in the market. You have all these wonderful technologies back about five to ten years ago, right, we didn't have all the frameworks. We had, you know, you started, uh, you know, coding it from scratch. What happens today, right, is instead of coding from scratch, start looking for your library, you start looking for your tool first to go and solve this problem. We're going way over the other side. So you, you, you look at Angular 2. You've got all these files, you have to learn all this stuff just to start your application. And when I was looking at it, it's like, whoa, as an independent person, that is too much work, aka using a bazooka to kill an ant. So what do you do to kill an ant? I mean, one way is to take your shoe and go and take it out and smash the ant. Then the other way is to go out and look for a tool that fits the application. So that is where we came up with the framework versus framework. So on the right are some of the uh, frameworks that you guys know. Okay, on the left is Vue.js. That's the kind of image that you want to be looking at. Which, which one would start off faster? Obviously, it would be the left one. And that's what Vue is all about. Getting straight up, uh, not bulky framework. So, three reasons why Vue.js is that platform that you want. First one is the tagline, which I think is um, why I'm so uh, excited about Vue. Less is more. So what do we mean by less is more? The, how did this whole thing happen is that you've got your frameworks that are backed up by the big companies. You've got uh, React, which is supported by Facebook. You have Angular, which is supported by Google. These guys are not too concerned about starting from Square Zero or independent consultants or any, any hacker in the basement, they are interested in big team solu solving big solutions. They, they can hard code or can do it from scratch, all the small stuff. So Vue, where did Vue.js from, come from? It came from just one guy, Evan Yu. He had this idea of you taking the best of Angular 1 and taking some stuff from Ember, mixing that in, but coming with something that was easy to deploy straight out. And that's one of the best things. Vue.js is so simple, right, that in 60 minutes, you could go out and start coding the thing. 
That's how simple it is. That's the whole idea of it. And finally, it's agnostic. Uh, it doesn't force you to use technologies out there. So one thing I really hate, right, when I was doing uh, React was that they had this thing called JSX. So I want to use React, but I have to go and do JSX. Angular 2, you want to take Angular 2, they want to do TypeScript. So uh, when you don't normally come across applications that use so much stuff. So Vue doesn't have that kind of stuff. We want to go straight to the coding, we want to get it nice and simple. That's why less is more. Second reason is Vue is progressive. So I know what you guys are thinking. Uh, you saw that uh, framework on the left. So this is a very bare bone kind of stuff. It doesn't do very much. No, you're wrong. In fact, the way to think of Vue is actually um, like an onion. It has, you can add the layers. It is progressively difficult. You can add all the applications that you hear, the, uh, what do you call, uh, Flux. What is it? Flux. Vuex, uh, same as the React stuff, some of these very much more complicated stuff. Uh, what it is, is that Vue is simple with a minimal core and an incrementally adoptable stack. So you can you add on to it, not have this whole thing deployed there and try to take away from it. So I'll show you guys that later, but this is why it's so exciting because generally you just want to take your shoe and squash an ant. If the end is much bigger, <laughs> then you use a bigger tool. That is how Vue.js works. Um, finally, right, uh, the whole point about de design from the ground up to be incrementally adopted. So again, same point, adding into that. You can start off really simple and add on to the thing and have your uh, application achieve the goal. So the third reason is faster. Um, the Vue is a framework under this structure called the MVVC, okay? So that's a model view, view controller. Um, what this means, right? Uh, not many people, I don't know why no one actually explains what MVC looks like. So the way I explain it when clients come over to my office, right, is you think of a restaurant. So MVC, right? Uh, let's say you go to a hawker shop. The same guy is the guy who takes your order, is the same guy who plays the thing and cooks the food. In a bigger restaurant, you've got a waiter, you've got a manager, and you've got a cook. So your waiter, he does the presentation of the food, he's the view. The manager is the controller, and the cook is the model. He does all the heavy work. So you, you never interact with the, the cook, you never interact with the model. This view is, uh, with the MVVC means that there's some interaction going on with the view. So a uh, simple example is if a burger comes to me in a restaurant and I want some salt in it, the MVC structure means that they send it back to the kitchen and then the chef puts the salt on it. The MVVC means the uh, waiter has the power to get salt and put it onto the burger. So you're having... Uh, some actions handled on the view side. Now, uh, what does this mean? Again, you gotta see it in practice, but uh, for me, I think it's, for those people with the backgrounds, maybe in PHP or something, we are quite f uh, comfortable actually having interac interactions with our view, with our viewer. Those people who are more traditional in the uh, coming back from the C plus or the uh, C sharp, these guys don't like that. They want all the stuff happening in the back end and the model area. So again, you guys have, if you like that kind of thing happening in the view, if you think it's really stupid to go back to kitchen and put salt there, you want it to be in the front, view is for you. So we'll take a look at that. And finally, um, coding experience with the coder. So on your right there is the React code, on the left is the uh, view. And uh, you can see the difference of the type of code. We have a object there. And on the right hand side, there's a little bit one more step more. The handles message change step, which is a, uh, it's a DOM system. Uh, don't worry what the heck that actually means, but 
<laughs> what it means is there's the one additional step happening down there. The other thing that's happening at the bottom, if you can see this area, uh, is that the view is doing a lot of the control. So you, you have your V model there, and that's actually uh, a, a view model. That, so you can actually affect changes in the view. Okay? So, oh no, okay, this part. <laughs> okay, so um, I think the best way, right, when I was going through this thing, right, is that since view is so simple, we should actually go and code the thing live and show you guys that how this actually works. Because no matter what I explain, right, this, you know, a framework's only a framework until you see it in action. So, uh, when I was coming up with this idea, my friend said to me, Lionel, you know, don't do that. <laughs> that is professional suicide in front of a room of coders live. This is very, very difficult. But I thought about it and I think, uh, let me take a shot at it and uh, let's see how we go with that. Don't, don't, don't uh, fault me for this stuff. And the only other reason why I would do this is that Vue is so simple that we can actually achieve this stuff. Like I wouldn't do it with any other language out there. So let's just throw a little example down here. Okay, so I've created a little, uh, a little web page down here. And uh, I've got a little stack here, simple stack. First of all, set up your environment. So I have a SAMP Windows Apache running over there. And I'm using a Win Microsoft Windows system. Shout out to Windows, who's, uh, sorry, Microsoft was providing us our, this wonderful venue for us. So let's just see what we can come up with, okay? Okay, so first of all, you just wanna have a little bit. I, I, I know it's supposed to be live from scratch, but I had some pre-made pre stuff so that I don't screw anything up. So this is just your standard HTML little file. And what I want to just say down here, right, is that this really, really simple, Notepad++, nothing fancy. I want it to be as simple as possible for everybody else. And I, and I like Notepad++. So the first thing you want to do, right, is very simple. You just ignore this stuff if you're a real beginner. Put your Vue.js include file in there. Now, I'm using the Node version because I didn't know what the internet was going to work, but we can actually just use a CDN. You can use a depository. You just copy the code. That's it. You don't need this thing on top down here, okay? So you can, you can go tonight don't even bother about how to download the thing. Just include that line over there, okay? For today, we're, we're not gonna use this. Just gonna use simply down here. So all you need, right, is just the div, the decorator with an ID saying app, okay? Just ignore this secondary uh, div there. I did that because uh, the plain version looks really sucky. So I put a nice CSS uh, framework down there. Okay, and then the final part of it, right? Very, very simple. You have your script tag here, and you add a view object. So, so simple, view object. All it does, right, it has an EL there, which says what element uh, we're gonna apply view to. Uh, we have a data, which lets us put some variables in there, and two other uh, lines there, which I'll explain later. So this is exactly very, very simple. So let, let's, let's do something, okay? Let's see how we go. So my first line down here says I have to, gonna try to bind a variable. So okay, we got the message here. Let's take a look at my thing. Oops, nothing, okay. So maybe we will put Let's use the uh, mustache uh, variable thing and put this word message there.
Okay, moment of truth. Here we go. Oh, did it appear? Oh, it did. It did. So, wow, it worked. Woo. <laughs> okay, so oh, oh. the variable binding appears right at the bottom, appear now on my view. Like, wow, are you guys mind blown? Everybody, anybody mind blown? Like, like what? Like, what do you do, man? Okay, it's like not, it's not HTML, you know. Yeah, thank you. Some, some positive reinforcement. Like, oh, what did this guy do? He put the variable down here. Like, well, what is going on? It looked like it flew up down here like a magic trick. Like, well, what's going on? Like, whoa, how long did that take? Where did the variable go? Okay, so that's, oh, that was good enough. All right, I can stop. Uh, all right, all right, well, well, let's go one more, okay? All right, Whew. like that part's out of the way. Okay, so now we bind this variable down here, right? Obviously, you guys, not enough, not, not impressive enough for me to just do that, not impressed. But let's try something else here. Uh, we need to do a, an event. Let's do an event, okay? Okay, so we created a button. Okay, do something. Do something button. All right. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, nothing happens. What am I going to do? Uh, so, we got to go wire this thing up, right? I mean, this, this button doesn't do anything. Let, let's, let's wire it up. So, we're going to wire this up using the view module called at click. Okay. Okay, and let's do let's call it do something. Okay. So obviously after you wired that out, uh, so this is the this thing over here, right, is your uh, view controller. And we'll now have to go to the back of the kitchen, right, and actually come up with something. See whether I got that one. Okay, <clears throat> so now I'm gonna do something and I'm gonna click this thing. Okay, Whew. second one went true. So we had an alert pop up right there at the bottom when I did something. Hello, everyone. So how long did that take? What happened down there? So Once again, we have at the bottom here your model. So this is the heavy stuff. We have some interaction happening on here, right? Uh, this is the, what we call the uh, view model. And we had the action being pulled down there, okay? So um, those people, anyone do the J J jQuery? You guys know jQuery, right? jQuery doesn't have that uh, at click over there. That jQuery thing is right at the bottom somewhere. So nothing is happening on the view side. Those people doing React, you know that you couldn't pull that one off. You would have to have it somewhere in the code and then pulling out there. So that's right there, do something. Okay? Now let's, let's so far so good. Whew. All right, now, now we go to the next one. Uh, methods, okay. Da, 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 da. Okay, so we have some do something, and we had that message. Let, let, let's, uh, maybe, let's change that variable there, that message.
Okay, let's see what happens. So, I triggered the event, bang. Hi everybody, I changed the variable live at that point of time. In the moment, it changed immediately. So this, this is that thing I'm talking about where we don't go and set up variables elsewhere. We don't have events firing everywhere. What is actually happening is that this message is actually linked to that display. So this is that virtual, um, those guys will know, virtual DOM. And this makes things very, very easy. So you, you'll see that somewhere else. I think Angular one's very common, but this is very cool programming. Okay, so now let's go one more. Okay, so two-way bind. Okay, basically, Right now, I put the variable, it changes the view. What if we're interacting with a form? Could I, could I link those two things together? How am I gonna do that? All right. So instead of doing that, right, what I could do is, let's create an input box. Okay, can't really see that info. Okay, all right. So there's a box down there, right? So we can type some stuff in it. Hmm, nothing happening. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wire this up. How am I gonna wire this up? So instead of going back to the kitchen, going right to the bottom part of the, that thing, I'm just gonna use the, our view model, okay? And immediately, it's right there. Is it? Yeah, okay, it's right there, just the checking. Uh, so, hello view JS meetup appears in that box down there. So what happened? Did I, did I go back to the kitchen? No, I didn't go back to the kitchen. I went to the salt table, grabbed the salt, put it down there. So this stuff is happening in the view. And that's really cool. So, let's just change some stuff over here. Whoa, what the? Yeah, it's dynamically linking up to this stuff through the model. So no going to the back. No need to go to that. Whack it right there. So it's, it's two-way binded. This is interacting with this. This is interacting with that. That's pretty cool down so far. Okay. Conditions with VF. Hmm. Okay. I think I can do this one. So, uh, you guys are familiar, sometimes you want things to pop around and uh, appear somewhere. Okay, so something hidden. Okay, now I really want to hide this thing. I turn that off. Let's let's try it going off. Ah, okay. All right. So as you can see, bang. The the uh, I managed to hide that with a V if by setting it to false. Okay. So something happened, and then uh, we set the variable. Well, but that's not very impressive, right? So. Uh, let, let's see what else we can do with that. Maybe we want to make it as a password or something. And that would re require actually computing, like having the thing done immediately. So let's, let's see what I can do now with that.
Okay, just want, I just wanted to check that. It was very close. Miss one equal sign there. Okay, so what happened, right? We, what's happening is that we're computing this variable live through the computer function. Okay, so this is again is how simple Vue.js is. You're writing here, boom. And the minute it's triggered to true, the thing fires up. Okay, so that's a computer pro, uh, property. What's exciting about that is that the variable is being computed as we are typing. So none of this complicated stuff. If you were using jQuery, you'd be dead. You'll have to wait for this blah, 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 on click. If this is equal, on minus, on whatever. This doesn't matter. As long as that variable is equal to the thing, no matter what manipulation is happening, the, the event will fire. So that is the computer property. Uh, pretty cool, I mean, it's very, very simple. <laughs> okay, let me see what the last two things is. List render, okay. One of the uh, best parts about programming, right, is uh, working with lists and big sets of data. And uh, previously, when we dealt with this, we had to just go to the back end, it's very annoying. So we push it into the back end, and then that does the, uh, the stuff. We, Vue handles it. I mean, look, if you've been to Angular, you know what is going to come up. But let me just show you guys how we do it. And for those people who are beginners who have no idea, uh, we can take a look at that. So let, let's see what we do. I've got a list here. should be correct all right so a list of admins of the group Lionel Shadi uh, Aaron yeah sorry if I didn't ask for permission um, so let's see what happens uh, we'll just create a list Okay, decorate a little bit, John. Okay, so what we can do, right, is again, tap another view model, right, over here. And instead of going back, we just go v4 equal admin in admins. Basically doing a loop over there. Let's try that. Oh, okay. So we've got John, 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 John. Okay? So we're looping through the thing. And, uh, oh, John. Okay, hang on a second. So I'm not pulling a variable down there. I need to do something to that. So what we'll do is just do another mustache uh, bracket, admin. Check the variable there at the bottom. The, its name and close that. Whoops, what happened? Whew. Nice one, thanks. Oh, okay, dot name. I think that should be okay. Okay, Whew. all right. So there we go. Bunch of uh, a list with a uh, rendered with all the variables of a JSON object without going to the back end. I didn't do anything in the model in that, that area that called the object. Nothing happened. We did it entirely from the view model. So this makes it very simple. We've got a whole bunch of stuff down there uh, and it's rendered out there. Okay. So let's see. Uh, I think we should be there. All right. This is the point seven. So I'm just going to recap what has happened so far in this beginner uh, live coding session. First, we binded a variable. We put something at the back end and push it out to the front end of the viewer. The second thing is that we work with events at the at click, which using this view model strategy, not going to the back end to push it out, not triggering something, sort of like linking the two together. 
That's what I said about the view uh, MVVC. Uh, the third thing is that we worked with some method. Remember the one where uh, it was equal to and made it disappear. And we did two-way binding uh, with our form. This is very complicated to pull off with other JavaScript networks. The fourth and the fifth one, we ran a condition with VF. And the sixth one is that we learned how to use the computed uh, property, changing the variable live as the variable changes every single time. So this will be the equivalent of throwing a lot of events out there. Finally, we learned how to do a list render. So now I'm going to come to my final act here and uh, to put in something that at least was that, that you may have seen or ap applied in real life. So let's see what we can do down there. So we've got this, we've got this. So let's, let's, uh, let's see what we can do. Let's see, okay. What if I had a directory of the admins here today and there were a lot of people and we wanted to search for these guys. So why don't I do a dynamic search on here? Okay, we've learned six principles. Let's put something in here. So the first thing is that we will create a computed pro property. Now I've already got something done over here. So we'll just follow that. Okay, admin filter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I think it's off, right? Oh, okay. I'm not going to be able to get out of this one now. Oh, damn. Okay, let's, let's, let's see what we can do. All right, let's create an admin filter. Okay, uh, I copied and pasted this pre-made, so don't blame me, all right? Well, what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna let S be this message, the message, uh, that variable done by my view model. Then we're gonna run a filter called this.admins.filter. So this is the just standard JavaScript filter uh, method. What it does is that it's, it takes a function here based on an item called admin. Uh, based on their name, we're going to lower it to uh, lowercase because you can see some of the names like myself, Lionel is a capital L. And if it's true, this will appear in the value, okay? So that's the, running a filter on the, on the list. Now the only other thing I need to do is that I can't use admins anymore. I have to use my computer property. Okay, so I think the, the property is called admin filter okay so let, let's fire up and see how that goes oops so usually if something goes wrong right it's usually a bracket somewhere oh okay what's that bracket there and that okay that's fine One more bracket? On which line? Here? Another curly bracket. Okay, I think that should be it. All right, let's see how it goes. Ah, all right. Hey, there's not even a display there. Oh, damn. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's working. Whew, I was wondering what was going on. All right, 
So <laughs> sometimes that happens, all right? One, one bracket and then you're off your game. But or let's just remove this thing right here, right? Bang. Oops, not, that's not the one. It should be this one here. Okay, and let's put this as Okay, so finally we have done with the dynamic search thing. There we go. Bang, live filtering of the entire list done in front of you guys, in front of the code. Hope that, that didn't take too long. Uh, you can see this application in uh, every contact list, every area. You want Aaron, A, A, done. Chadi, C, H, A, R, D, Y. Okay? So, as you can see, we've taken through all the principles down here of the application to create a dynamic search box uh, based on Vue.js uh, on the code done in front of you guys. One tiny error down there, two maybe. And that's just a testament of how simple Vue.js is and how you can actually apply this uh, system. So, thanks very much, guys. I'm now going to hand this over to Shiling and... Uh, Anybody got, uh, let, let's, let's go straight to Shiling and then we'll...